This society will always be as a drunken of the line. Controlling all the senses for understanding great divine. I will send fire to this land. Peace and blessings. This is your brother Gabar, and this is I Am Fit Podcast. Are you fit to go God's way? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Before we start, I just wanted to make sure you guys could hear me. Let's see if I could be heard. Mic check. Let's see real quick. Before we start, okay, I could be heard. Okay, outstanding. Shalom, shalom. I see all the brothers. Shalom, the word. You guys are always, why I cannot see my chat. Hold on just a second. Uh, that's the other. That's the, is it? No. Okay. Yeah, we good. We good. Okay. I think we're here. All right. Here we go. All right. I got two screens. So Shalom, Shalom, peace and blessings to all the brothers and sisters out there. All right. Two seconds. Let me just look at something real quick. I think I... So where are you, chat? Okay. Why is the chat not working on this side? 
Hold on two seconds. Let me try something. Share. Uh, paste. Copy. I'm just curious why I d it is not popping up over here. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. I don't know what's going on in this side of the wood, but let's see here. Anybody here, huh? Anybody here? Anybody here? Can you help me here? Uh, one of these teams. Hold on. Two seconds, folks. Okay. Okay. So we have it here. So let me switch it over to over here on this side. And let me do this on this side so I can see what's going on. We also have, let me see, we also have the other on the okay so you guys can comment also on both sides okay <clears throat> so peace and blessings brothers and sisters but especially you brothers because this is man going god's way that's the movement that's a philosophy a man going god's way and allowing nothing to get in his way to go god's way no woman no job no circumstance no family member no friend christ said if you are not willing to sacrifice your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your wife, your land, property, you're not worthy of me, right? Follow my cross and worship and follow me, as Christ says. So let's have a conversation today. You guys heard the title, the open challenge to Pastor Dial. So let me kind of give you guys the backdrop. Um, about a week ago, uh, I came across a video with Pastor Dow challenging uh, Newbury for a debate and why and why he challenged him. Newbury, that's going to be not Newbury, excuse me, uh, Ringo TV. Shout out to Ringo TV. Okay. Uh, and Ringo TV is a friend. The brother there is a friend of uh, Newbury. I know Newbury. I've been on his show for a couple times. I think he's been on my show. I think once, I think I've been in the show twice, if I'm not mistaken, or, or maybe I went, I went there twice, I forget. But um, I saw a debate or, or, or a request for a debate by Pastor Dow, and I want to play that video in a few minutes. And I said, you know, uh, do you think Newbury is going to challenge or take on the challenge for this debate? I think the fact that, first of all, uh, Pastor Dow took another man's wife. There, there is no way to basically uh, sugarcoat it. There was a, a couple that came into the church uh, a few years back. Uh, we thought it was about 10 years, but this is going back maybe six or seven years ago. And um, as any other couple, there were some issues. Uh, and I may bring the brother, I think the brother's name is Eric uh, Gonzalez, if, I, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And... Um, What basically happened, there were some issues. They had some marital problems. In the middle of all it, uh, Bishop, oh, not Bishop, uh, Pastor Dow ended up with the brother's wife. And he, she is one of his, uh, I think, four wives. He has three or four wives. She, she, she's one of them. And there's been circulating throughout the, the Internet. So Pastor Dow uh, had a small video. Uh, I'm going to play it. It's about a minute and uh, 27 seconds long. And Pastor Dow, in this particular conversation, um, he um, decided to say, hey, I want to debate Ringo TV um, about adultery, divorce, and can you get divorced, yada, yada, yada. So I was like, okay, the nerve of this guy, right, let me take off my glasses. I'm sorry. The nerve of this guy that he took another man's wife, regardless whether he believes that he's right or in his crazy mind, he believes that he's right. Okay, let, hold on. Let me just fix this real quick, guys. I apologize. Uh, now I know what, what was wrong. Okay. Uh, two seconds, I think. Oh, not this. Okay, here we go. Uh, here we go. That was the issue. Okay, I think I fixed it. Okay, perfect. 
Okay, and Shalom, Shalom, the brother worm. He, uh, thou need a face, genius, genius, because of the Christians making us look crazy on um, Polly as a community. And, and, and my thought, exactly. My thought, exactly. So when I saw this video that Pastor Dow played, um, uh, and folks, I don't deal with rumors. I deal with facts, and and it's, it's factual. This is not uh, a thing that is is based on rumors. Uh, now, I want to show you another show. I mean, another program that I was in the show in in a program that I was I was having discussing with one of Pastor Dow ex uh, Bishop that I guess they had a falling out, and this happened within a few months. So this is fairly new, uh, and so forth, so on. And I'm going to play that video. But I also want to play this video because it's like this. Um, Pastor Dow has been going back and forth with, with uh, Ringo. Or Ringo has been, I think, doing like about 11 shows about this subject matter. And Pastor Dow responds to him in regards of doing a debate. So when I call uh, Newbury, I say, Brother Newbury, is, is, you know, is this thing going to go on? the debate, and if it is, you know, tell Ringo I'll, you know, I could help him out scripturally if he needs help. I could be in his, you know, I could help him out with, with the debate because I think this is something that is uh, wrong for Pastor Dow to be doing. A and B, um, if Ringo TV does not take the debate, I, I would think that Pastor Dow would use that as a victory. See, I challenged him for a debate. He didn't debate me. That's me. He, he's scared. I'm standing with Yad and blah, 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 and yah, 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 right? And, um, okay, I'm hearing that the volume is kind of low. Okay, I, I'm bringing up my, my battery pretty high. And let me bring it up this way as well. Just adjust it in your, in your uh, scenario. Uh, mic check, one, two, three. Uh, I'm good in my end, um, but I apologize. You try to adjust in your end. I apologize if it's uh, um, let me just double check. Two seconds, folks. Let me just double check here. Make sure my value, my volume is good. Uh, two seconds. Let me just double check. Two seconds, folks. Let me just double check here. Yeah, I'm li I'm listening to me in my end. I, it, it sounds good. So um, it looks like everything is a go. Uh, okay, so let me. Uh, play this video for you guys to understand where I'm coming from. Um, and then I'm going to play another video to kind of backdrop what I was saying earlier that Brother Ringo uh, didn't want to do the debate, according to Newbury. And that was confirmed because the Ringo, they just did a, uh, a video on the subject matter that, you know, uh, he doesn't want to waste his time with debating. Um, also, I told Ringo, I mean, not Ringo, uh, Newbury, you should debate him. I think, you know, I think somebody should debate him. He didn't want to do it because uh, uh, Brother uh, Newbury, he has a lot going on. He has a, a property, some land he's, he's cultivated. He doesn't have the time. He has a family and all that. So, okay, it says, it's good now. Okay, oh, praises. Okay. Uh, okay, now I'm hitting volume is low. Then I'm hitting it's good now. I just try at first adjust your volume in your end, see if that will work. Uh, because I got the mic all the way to the top, and I don't want it to get, uh, okay, I'm saying I'm, it's sounding good. Okay, don't praise this. All right. So I said, you know what? I'll debate him, right? So I'm doing this open debate, open call for Pastor Dow. Um, I'll say, I'm going to send you an email, but if you hit this, if you, if you, uh, if uh, one of your representatives, uh, wants to respond, uh, uh, we could talk, and we could set a, ta a time and date. I think, according to the video, he wanted to kind of do like an open uh, or face-to-face. -face. We could do a face-to-face -face or over the the internet here, whatever you feel comfortable. We could set up the the the, uh, the rules and regulations, and then we could get it going. So let's let's play this video because I want to be able to, to see where I'm coming from uh, and people could maybe understand um, uh where where I'm looking to take this. Uh, so let me play the video, fair use. Let me know you guys could hear it, and then we could you could take it from there. All right, hey. So the topic of the hour today on YouTube is 
uh, what people are perceiving to be adultery. So this is what I want to do. What I want to do is, and since there's a lot of people out there that are talking and it came by our way of Ringo TV, Ringo TV, this is Pastor Dow. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate on a professional moderated platform on neutral ground, somewhere between New York and Tennessee, a professional moderated debate on divorce and remarriage. What does the Bible actually say? Your position is, is that once you're divorced, or you, you, a woman can't be divorced and she can't be remarried, or a man shouldn't divorce his wife. I don't know what your position is. Maybe you can clarify it. Uh, but my position is, is that the most high is a divorcee. There's a laws for divorce. And people, once they are divorced, they can, in fact, get remarried. So let's see how this goes. And let's see if, um, since everybody has a lot to say, let's see if we got a lot to say on a professionally moderated um, platform. Let's see if uh, Ringo TV and maybe he have a couple other people may want to be with him on his board, on his side of that. Uh, let's see if we can get this going. Y'all have a blessed day. Make sure y'all get, make sure he gets his message, all right? Make sure you respond, Ringo. Okay, so that's what it is, right? So, Pastor Dow, this is Brother Gabar, formerly known from GOCC, Elder Gabar, Yesha Allah from GOCC, formerly. I'm now in this podcast uh, promoting truth and righteousness, right? Hold on, let me see, adjust this camera real quick. Uh, it's, it's out of whack sometimes, so I want to, I got to fix it. Okay, here we go. All right, so I wanted to make sure the camera is straightforward because I want to challenge you, brother, and this debate. I think you was wrong in taking this other man's wife. I think you are abusing the scriptures for your advantage. I think it was wrong for you to uh, take an opportunity of a relationship. There was some toxic scenario, and I'm not saying it was, but I, or there were some clearly issues because if there was no issue, you were not able to wiggle yourself in into another man's wife. According to Brother Eric uh, Gonzalez, from the time of meeting you and the time that uh, he lost his wife, it was a period of a year. One year from meeting you, a year later, he's no longer with the church, your church. He's no longer with his wife, his family, that he came in with three kids. And you had the cojones, the, the audacity to think in some universe in your mind that you could take a, this man's wife because of something that you came up in your mind as justification. I would challenge you into a civil debate whenever, wherever. We'll, we'll lay down the, 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 the groundwork, brother, and let's push something up in, in stakes. If I win this debate, you have to let that woman go. If I win this debate... If I were to show you scripturally that you're wrong, brother, not my opinion, not your opinion, but scripturally that you, a pastor, or any man of any church, can find justification of, yeah, they're having issues. You know, I don't know how you could determine a man, to, uh, you know, abandoning his wife after a few months because he was looking to sell his house in Florida or something. Something, some circumstance, but you to take the opportunity. From my understanding, from the period of him leaving and and, and, and the wife sending some divorce papers, it was like a period under you know under uh, three months. And you find justification for that? You know how many men they they raise families. You know what they go through in the divorce courts. They they, they get railroaded. You know what they go through with these child support and the the all these issues. And you was part of that, brother. You empowered this woman to, 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 to fornicate and leave her husband just because there were some issues. You was wrong, and I challenge you to a debate. But if you, if you are proven to be wrong, you have to leave that woman alone. If I'm proven, if I'm proven to be wrong, I will apologize. So you know what? Pastor Dow is correct. There's nothing wrong here. Let's move on. And I used to, you know, from all the churches out there, that I used to siege all the different groups. You was one of them that I used to say, yeah, hey, he's, I think he's doing the right thing. He's getting away from the, these major cities. He's creating a community outside of these major uh, 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 metropolitan. And 
self-sufficiency. I, I'm all for that. That's what I'm looking to do eventually with men going God's way. And, and, and there's other people doing it. Shout out to New, Ringo TV. I mean, not Ringo TV, uh, New Breed. Um, Global too. He has a community as, as well. I'm going to go visit them as well. They're putting something together. And so for someone, I'm working on some things, but, you know, I'm keeping my, 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 my mouth shut because too many people, you know, uh, 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 talk. But there's a thing, for brothers. There needs to be a universal understanding of what does it mean, a marriage and also a divorce. Because I have heard too many stories in my now going on almost 32 years in this walk, all right, of, of 31, I'm 51, 20 years old, do the math, right? I'm on the approaching 32 years. There's been people, right, that it's like this. When I was with One West, we were the only church that I knew that were keeping the Torah and knew we were the Israelite and we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There was doctrine, some, uh, some things I disagree now uh, that that they taught wrongfully, and, and like baptism, uh, Gentile for all, I mean, uh, uh, salvation for all and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, Gentile for who, who, you know, that's, uh, that's, I had a long day. Uh, 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 salvation for all Gentiles, Jew, Jew and Gentile alike, right? Um, so they have some, some, some wrong issues, but in regards of order, if you sleep with a woman, brother, that's your wife. If you sleep with a woman, brother, you got to marry her. If you lay with a woman, brother, you got to, you know, do it, make it right. That was a common thing in One West. You would have never have gotten away with if you was in One West. And shout out to One West for all the work that they do back in the days. I mean, I don't agree with all the doctrine, but that organization, Spring World, a lot of information, and now it, it, it's, it's, it's becoming mainstream. You know, I remember about the Russian icons. Now it's, it's all over the place in the Internet. We knew that in the 90s about the royal black families in, in Europe, all the Scots and all the Welch and all the people that were in those areas in, in Europe, uh, royal families, uh, uh, Nature Knows No Color Line uh, by J.S. Rogers, uh, From Man to Superman, also by J.S. Rogers. All these books that the m mainstream academia are not teaching or showing, One West, 125th Street, that little, sh that little school, it was like a little hole in the wall. With all its problems, it they were bringing a lot of scholarly work, a lot of, a lot of controversial conversations and, conver and, and, and information like we are the tribe of Israel. We are the Jews of the, uh, of the Bible. And, and, and because of them, I was able to know who I am as, 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 as a Hebrew Israelite. So shout out to them. And they had a lot of mistakes, and, and, and I disagree with their racist rhetoric. I disagree with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, doctrine that they believe, the reincarnation doctrine, uh, you know, so for so on. Christ was coming before the year 2000. They were wrong about that. There was a lot of things they need to work on. Um, but this would never have gotten away back then. We were a different type of breed. But now you have all these these individualites just setting up different churches. And this is the reason why. The number one reason, Pastor Dow, right? And my old, my, my, my previous church, GOCC. We all know why we left. And, you know, the last scandal is Bishop Amash's father was committing adultery with another man's wife, and the church did nothing about it. And to this day. You know, recently I just got a text, Elder, come back. It's time. Look what's going on over there in Russia and in the Ukraine and Israel and, and, and Iran. Is it time for you to come back? Not until we establish a apostatic free, uh, uh, judgment uh, 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 committee of men that could deal with judgment. If, if Elder Ricard established that today, okay, so this is for anybody who will call me, text me, you know, try to see, maybe I could convince Ricard, I mean, Gabar to come back. I'm not going to come back until there is a apostolic, a, a, a bishopric of bishops that will deal with judgment and they will vote. No one could make one decision, including Elder Ricard Shiar. 
he could be the first of, of equals, the first of many, but there will have to be a vote when it comes to making decision in regards of judgment and direction. And even, you know, I know that we were having conversation, uh, you know, doing two years ago when I was leaving. He said, well, we're, we're the bar, if I want to take the church a certain direction, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, uh, deal with that. You know, uh, I want to override the committee. I said, well, that's kind of uh, undermines the committee. It, it, it doesn't make no sense to even serve a committee. You can override it. He, he could override it in any other scenario, but only dealing with judgment, people committing adultery, people doing all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, fornication things in the church, all kinds of sin. The committee will have to be the one making that decision. And he could be part of the committee. But once a vote is made, it becomes law. So therefore, no one is above the law, not including me. Also including me, right? Excuse me. Also including me, okay? And there should be a, a bishop constitution that, we, that, that in regards of code of conduct that we have to sign and the punishment and, the, and, and, and the, what will happen to that individual will, will be pre-agreed upon before it happens because, you know, once things happen, that's when people start getting biased. And I covered this with, with Carl and, and so forth. So, and I believe that will restore the church, and I will come back tomorrow if that gets established. So anybody who is thinking about calling me or thinking about texting me or thinking about emailing me about Gabar, we miss you, come back, don't even brush your, waste your time because if the committee doesn't exist and it's fair and it's just, specifically dealing with judgment, I could do with anything else. But we're dealing with judgment. I believe my good friend, uh, 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 Ricard Yashiar, Ricard Shiar, that's his weakness. That's his weakness. He's biased in, those, in this situation. And it will free him up. It will free him up from doing those type of situations. And, and I not only do I recommend this for GOCC, but I recommend this for all churches. There should never be one man making decisions. Pass it down. You should not be the only one making decisions. You should not be the only one making a call. It should be a committee of vote that you're part of that vote, but also you cannot override that vote. You should have gone to a fair committee to say, hey, can I get this man's wife? And if that committee was fair and righteous, it would have said, no, brother, you can't do it. Matter of fact, that should be a no-brainer. No man should have the cojones, the who spot to think, I could take another man's wife for any reason. So I'm putting out there an open challenge for Pastor Dow on a respectful, thought-provoking debate. I would like to set up the, the, the you know the 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 rule of conduct and the rule of engagement and how we're gonna do the time period, what subject we want to be talking. But the subject is adultery. And not only we have to talk about adultery, he has to show me scripturally that what he did was lawful, was part of the understanding of the Bible biblically. I don't want to hear his opinion. I don't want to hear he was an abuser. He was a devil worshiping, running around, drinking blood. I don't want to hear none of that. I want to hear biblically, where are you, as a man of the cloth, grew the, the, the guts, the cojones, the huspa, the audacity to say, you know what, I'm an elder of the church. This couple came to me, and a year later, I'm with that man's wife. He's no longer with the church. He's a devil, evil man, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, One thing I realized that when we have in a, when we in a situation when and this happened even when I was with GOCC, then you have a couple that came in, comes in, and they come in already with issues, already with some issue that needs to be that, that needs to be addressed. You know, uh, issues that was never really addressed, issues that you know some people come to the church to find resolution over. The issues, right? Maybe we could go to church. Maybe this changed our lives. We've been living in sin. 
I sin, you sin, we've been arguing, we got back and forth. Maybe we could go to this church and this guy could help me. This pastor could help me. That's what most people go to, to you know, in regards to churches. And I've been in a situation that people come in in the church, already have toxic scenario, scenario, and the wife and the older husband will come in and say, Elder, I don't think we're married. Why? Because, you know, according to the law, he's supposed to have come to my father first. Or I'm supposed to have done this, Elder. I'm supposed to have done this. That's not my wife. And usually those type of conversations happen after there's issues. Sometimes people come into churches to get a voice from their, from their spouse. And we're going to deal with, with, with all of that. How should we address that? Because let's keep it real. We were not all virgin when we got married to our spouse. Women were not, ma- you know, virgins nine times out of ten. That's, you know, that's a normal, you know, most people, you know, date in high school, got a high school sweetheart and, they break up and they date somebody else and they have some few mistakes and then they find the right person and boom, get married, right? Eventually. So there needs to be a standard. And what standard is that? And I believe that standard is the standard I used to use when I was I was used to use when I was in GOCC. And what was the standard? That baptism. Now. This is my advice to all the pastors who are listening to the sound of my voice. And I give everybody permission to uh, take snippet from this video, whatever, you know, when I challenge. I'm going to continue, you know, repeating the challenge for them. You could take any part you like and and send it to Pastor Dow and let it go viral because I want him, I want this to get to him. Right. And we're going to deal with domestic violence and all that. We're going to deal with all that, okay? Uh, uh, shout out to your sister. It says, going through a divorce now due to domestic violence, uh, S- SMH. Now I am 35 with four kids and no direction, okay, with the mother. Well, this is the whole thing. We, we, we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with that. But this should be the standard because this was my standard, and, and you guys let me know if my standard was off. When people used to come into the church, and especially they are a couple, I do not baptize them until we have a conversation with them and then we establish some understanding. Are you married? Would you consider yourself a married? Because sometimes they're like, well, we're dating. It could be a boyfriend or girlfriend. It could be like, you know, one of the two is dragging the other one in. So all those things you have to look at, all those things you have to, you know, uh, consider and, and measure before you baptize them. Sometimes it's the husband wants to get baptized, but the wife is like, I'm just here because he's here, or, or the other way around, right? Those are the ones you have to watch closely. And I tell them, you're either going to get baptized married or single. If it's complicated, if it's a long story, I'm going to postpone the baptism until both of you guys are ready to get baptized. Because if you're not married and you're not baptized, or or excuse me, if you're married or you're in a relationship and you're not baptized, now this is the time for you to make the decision. Not after you have some problems. Not after you're in the church in a year and the pastor decides, hey, you know, it's that issue, let's, let's, let's break it up, or I could now marry her, whatever. Is, up, is the responsibility of the bishops to look at every situation and leave it up to them and make it clear to them. After baptism, they're not allowed to change their mind. Oh, Elder, I know I told them that was my spouse, but, you know, we've been having issues. She's not changing or she's not changing. I want to leave her. And these are the issues that usually occur with these churches. And I've been in a situation. There's a brother, I don't know what's happening now because I left the church, but there was a brother that took another man's wife in the church, and I kicked both of them out, the wife and and the brother who was committing adultery against the brother. And this is what happened. A couple came in. Uh, She had a child from a different, a previous relationship. Um, He took, he, they were at the time with the child. I think the child was his or some, I, I forget. But they had some. They were having issues. They were actually homeless between homes. They were in her sister's house, and they got kicked out. And they went to the church. So it was already already coming in with a toxic situation. So 
So we were helping the brother out, getting you know getting him a job, getting him situated. Uh, they were living in two separate situations because they couldn't live. They said, listen, she was able to live with her sister uh, because the sister didn't want him in the house, and but he was staying with his brother, and we were both counseling them uh, during the process. During that process, a brother from the church sneaked in, started talking to the sister, then she started disappearing. But boom, they popped up. A child came out of that, of fornication. I said, brother, you, 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 there's nothing I can do with you now. Because now that fornication child that you had, um, uh, unfortunately, is a constant reminder. I mean, it, 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 what you want me to do? Oh, you know, be suspended for six months, and I'm sorry I took the man's wife. There's certain things, as a, as a bishop, you have to put your foot down. There is no negotiation. That, I'm not Christ. I'm not saying you're not going to be saved. Because it's not the bishop's job to save people. It's the bishop's job to keep order within the church. It's the bishop's job to sometimes be the bad guy and say, no, you cannot do that, brother. No, you cannot do that, sister. So it takes a certain personality to be a bishop. If you're a yes man, if you, are, if you, you know, somebody blows, you, you fall very easily, you're not a stir man, you're not a stubborn sometimes, you got to be stubborn sometimes. As long as you can be stubborn, as long as you, 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 you operate with the book. As long as you operate with this book, as long as you stay with the word, you can be as more stubborn as you want. And I'm about mercy and grace. I'm, listen, I'm not saying there's no way to restore uh, the people. But the rest restitution or the restoredness has to come from making it right. Meaning, if you with another man's wife, you have to let her go because that's an indulgence affair. And what women need to understand that you getting a divorce from your husband or you want to leave your husband according to the law because you're in an abusive relationship and that abusive scenario is always, I, 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 and not to disrespect the sister who, you know, and things of that nature, there's two sides to, the, to every story. Because sometimes when you have a toxic relationship with the woman and the man is always disrespecting each other, always yelling at each other, throwing things at each other, calling each other name, eventually it's going to get to violence. Because that's what a man do. That's what a man how to react. Throughout his frustration is, 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 is going to be a situation that he's going to just lean to violence. And I'm not condoning violence. But usually violence don't usually start out the blue. You know, it's not usually like, you know, I was just reading the Bible, you know, smelling my flower and, and doing prayers, and my husband just came and whacked me. It's usually a cause and effect. Like what happened? What did he do? What did you say? What was the discussion? What was usually is a is a situation, but usually when violence comes in is when respect is out the window. That's why I never been with a woman or stayed in a relationship with a woman that ever calls me out my name. The minute she starts cursing me out and all that, I need to go. That would work for me. That's what had worked for me. I don't once a certain level of disrespect, or once we're in a situation that I'm so pissed off that I want to punch a wall, I want to once the woman gets me that angry, this is not the woman for me because I will be in jail. I need peace in my home. I need to be tranquilo. I need to be like, you know what? There's nothing going on. Everything is fine. And then it may be little disagreements, but as long as she understands that ultimately the bucks, the, 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 the final thing starts with me, start, ends with me, we're we cool. Now, listen, I want to hear my wife's opinion. I want to hear my wife's disagreement and why she disagreed with me. And I and if it brings wisdom and I agree with it, I'm going to follow it. But ultimately, when there is a plane, there's a pilot and there's a co-pilot. When there's a company, there's a senior, uh, 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 there's a CEO and there's a you know there's a senior partner and a, and a, and a minor partner. You, you you cannot have two people equally, right? Equally in power. Equally in control because eventually these two sovereign uh, 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 human beings are going to sometimes disagree. So, Pastor Dow, I want to challenge you into a debate about divorce. Could a woman get divorced? Could a man get divorced? Why? Uh, give me a, a scenario, so forth, so and so on, and things of that nature. And before we people go. Go into the, uh, the the conversation about what about abuse, right? Like the sister mentioned earlier about she was in a in an abusive relationship with four kids and things of that nature. <coughs> I 
I've been in the, on those type of situations. That, not myself, but I have cancel abuse scenario. And when you have a scenario, when you have kids involved and there's violence, the first thing you have to do is separate them. You got to counsel her separately and you got to counsel his separately. If he needs to get anger management, if he has to go and, and, and operate in things that nature, that, uh, you know, to get his mind right, right? If they have to go to counseling to learn how to best communicate with each other. Because usually domestic violence doesn't just fall out of the sky. It's, it's years of, of, of built-up resentment towards a situation. And if that doesn't work, right? Because that, that the bottom line, like, what about what about if that doesn't work, right? What about he keeps beating her and things of that nature? All I could tell the sister is this, according to the Torah, sister, and especially if she's a member of a church, it's, it's a structure and things of that nature. Because, you know, it, it, yes, we're not gonna be saved by the law because we all sinners. We're gonna be saved by grace, but we cannot stress the grace, the grace of the God is given a, a bestow, bestow upon us. So if it's a situation, it happened before, after baptism, after they're a member of a church, right? Um, there has to be a conversation of restoring the integrity of the Torah. And sister, you have to remain unmarried or be reconciled to your, to your husband. And what I'm saying is people may disagree with me. People may say, well, Gabar, do you mean to tell me that if a sister joined a church or joined your church and she, is, and she is in an abusive relationship, she has to remain unmarried for the rest of her life if the husband doesn't want to uh, 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 be part of this you know, uh, organization or if he leaves, things of that nature? That's what I'm saying. Now, and there's a reason why that's what I'm saying. There is nothing within the Bible that addresses those circumstances. Let me give you an example. When you're in a situation, if you go back like about 100 years ago or, you know, back, let's not even deal with, with biblical time. Let's deal with early America time. Do you know if a woman was married and let's say her husband went to war and his body was not retreat, meaning there was no way to confirm that, you know, whether he is alive or dead, the woman would have to remain unmarried until he gets confirmed dead. So you have women sometimes waiting for a year, two years, three years, four years. And, well, he's missing. We don't know where he's at. Well, we heard some words. He's here. He's a prisoner there. He, we're trying to retrieve him and things of that nature. The woman, according to the tradition, you have to remain unmarried. That's where the whole scarlet, scarlet letter things and 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 and, and uh, shaming a woman to remarry if a husband's still alive. Back in biblical times, there was no divorce for a woman. There's no law for a woman to say, you know what, I'm not happy. I'm in an abusive relationship, and I'm pretty sure there were abusive relationships back then. Nothing within the law that I could read. They will exempt a woman from getting the uh, divorce. And I know that's a hard uh, pill to swallow. And I know that certain men are going to try to uh, abuse that situation. But as a bishop, as a man of the cloth, it is not wisdom for you to deal with a woman that just came out of a, a, a scenario or is in a situation that is toxic or, or, or what have you, Right? Shout out to the uh, to 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 uh, brother Michael says Romans seven and two is a woman uh, um, a married woman, for example, is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. Shout out, shout out. So Pastor Dow, I want to hear what's your response to that, because I you know I want to play this video real quick. I want to play this video. Uh, shout out to Brother Ferulian Raylo. Uh, brother uh, Raylo with Brother Newbury, he actually invited me to this debate or this discussion. Not that it wasn't a debate. Um, 
there was a discussion about uh, this particular subject, but uh, shout out to Pastor uh, Rufus, right, from Servant of Yah. We had a conversation. We're going to probably have a uh, continual conversation. But I think the reason why it was accepted within a uh, straight way for this to happen, I think it's the ideology that Bishop, uh, not Bishop, Pastor Dow, um, the ideology he polluted the church with. Because he would not have gotten away with it. There was not some biblical or, or lesson or instruction or point of view of the law or, 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 or you know, the, the, the religious institution. There had to be something that he could say, this is what is happening, and this is the reason why I'm able to take this woman. So I want to just listen a little bit to this particular discussion because it will share some light on uh, why I think it's necessary to have this conversation. Fair use. Let him go. And then after that, I'm going to let you go, New Breed, and I'm going to ask him a question. We're going to do it like that. All right. Absolutely. If he has any questions for us, he could feel free as well. Yeah, I have just one question. Uh, from your experience with Pastor Dow in Strayway, where do you feel? And I apologize, there was a delay. I don't, I don't think it was came from me. It could have been somebody else, but they, you know, they were not a delay. Excuse me, like an echo. So, so just you, you know, just uh, be in mind that that was is an echo. But you know, you'd be able to understand what the, the question. If and I'll repeat it just in case you did it. If, if the first of all, do you believe the allegations is true that he took another man's wife? Um, but whether you think he got the scriptural understanding, because I know I think a day ago I saw a video of him challenging um, Ringo TV on a debate in regards to this whole allegation of him committing adultery. He feels he did not commit adultery, and he feels that he would like to have a debate with Ringo about this subject. From your experience with him, where do you see where he will grab the, you know, he would scrapitalate that understanding? Did you ever had a conversation with him or there was a lesson you witnessed that would give you some insight what, what why he believes he didn't he actually broke it down in this video saying how he don't believe that uh secular marriage licenses are from yeah so if you got a marriage license in the world he don't believe that's being you put together by yeah then he also believes things that are magnitude man with the, when it comes to the spirit of the law how men will abuse women and put them away, but not make it concrete. Meaning, okay, like I'll give an example. Uh, I'm pissed at you. You go over here and be with your mom or whatever. I haven't given you a bill of divorce, but I ain't taking care of you. I'm not doing anything, but you're just sitting over there. And you're still supposed to be mine. He considers that to be abuse. You know what I mean? Like no definition. So from his mindset, he believes if you're putting them away, you need to, and that's why y'all hates the putting of the away, because putting away is not defining what she should have. She should either be your wife, because if you're really putting them away, you should be sending them away to get rehabilitated so they can get right and then come back to your home. Not just to be put out here and say, well, you mind, but since you don't want to listen, uh, I ain't going to give you a bill of divorce, which, you know, a lot of crazy men will do today woman will be getting abused, she'll be getting taken advantage of, whatever the case may be. And the man will say, well, you know what? I'm just going to have you sit over there then. And they could be there for years with nothing concrete. So that's the mindset that he has when it comes to this type of thing. Now, let me tell y'all what my mindset is, okay? This is how I deal with stuff like this. I don't see the father micromanage any of our lives. He says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. If we want to go out and sin, guess what he's going to do? Let us go out and sin. If we want to go out here and be holy and righteous, he's going to allow us to do that. One thing I never have done in any level of leadership I've ever been in is micromanage people. I personally believe it's crossing the line when I step into your bedroom and tell you how to do what you're doing as a man. Now, if you invite me in, meaning past Rufus, elder Rufus, brother Rufus, whatever title I've ever been in, I need your counsel. I need your advice, man. I need to know how to handle this. I'm more than willing to come in and be your brother, stand with you, guide you, counsel you, help you through the book, whatever. But if I'm not invited in, I don't just kick the door in. 
That's how I've always been. A lot of this stuff going on with, with, with uh, Pastor Dow was taking place in Tennessee. And I was getting very, very, very limited information on what was going on. I was. And again, that ain't my business. So I didn't really give it a lot of credence and, and thought. Well, my personal opinion, it should have it should have been your business because, and this is the reason I think a committee, if there was a committee, that, and if he was a bishop, he would have been part of, right? Because when you when you continue hearing the video, Pastor Rufus or Bishop uh, 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 Pastor Rufus met Eric um, Gonzalez and his wife on their way towards. Uh, to meet Pastor Dow. So he knew they were married. So if, if he was hearing things, he said, what's going on there? Because we all have to be in one page. And I think this is what, this is what, what, what usually happened when you put a man in, 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 a, in, a, in a, some form of uh, stage or stratosphere of, you know, he's God's prophet or he's some elder, that it, 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 it becomes intimidating. See, I've never been that type of situation. Anytime I had to be for issues or, 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 or you know, with, with uh, Ricard, Elder Ricard from GOC, I used to call him, hey, Ricard, what, what happened with this? What's going on with this? What was done? And things like that. Because outside of the church, my integrity is important to me too. Who I associate with is important to me. If so I'm even some corruption or some issues, the, the, every bishop of every church has to write, and it is, it is your business to see what's going on in another church or uh, within your body, it, and especially when we're dealing with divorce and another wife and I'm with her now, he's, all that has to be approved by some uh, 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 entity, a body of men that, uh, that are not biased, that will judge righteously. It should not be up to one individual because I think the pain that they paint, or the picture they painted on this brother was he, he abandoned her, he was, you know, some abusive uh, language was used, all kinds of issues, but nothing was really proven. Everything is all this. But even if that's the case, let's just say everything is true, abuse this, abuse that, abandonment this, it should not be of a period of, a period of one year from Brother Gonzalez meeting Pastor Dow and a year later, he's getting a divorce paper, and he's getting divorced from his wife. And Pastor Dow is supporting her in this divorce because he's given, she's able to stay in the land. He got he left the land, so he's no he can longer go back. You got guys there with guns and all that, and big guys, football players. He allowed this woman to use the system against her husband, and he and he is to say, hold on, hold on, let's all slow down. Blessed be the peacemaker that make peace. No, this brother was an opportunity. And and, and shout out to uh, Pastor Rufus. I represent, I mean, I, re I understand that he's represent himself now and he's doing the work and things of that nature. But I disagree with him that that was not his business. It was his business. It's everybody's business. It's the body's business who's committing fornication or not. Right? Fair use. back then because it's like that's what they got going on now eric if he comes in today he can vouch for this him and nelly and his family stayed at straightway georgia with us for a few days when they were on their way up to straightway for uh the first time i think it was the time he was actually dropping them off and then going back down there to sell the house or whatever the case may be i thought they were fine i didn't see any issues with their family um if they had some, Nelly did a very good job of hiding it. The children did a good job of hiding it. We just thought they were good saints coming up from Florida, and they stayed a few days with us. Now, mm -hmm. once everything went down, people were, of course, hey, elder this. And my, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with me. If Eric needs to. And that's what's the mistake. It had everything to do with you because if you were to start asking questions and say, wait a minute, who made the decision that it's okay for this man to uh, to take this man's this man other man's wife. Now, what committee? What decision? What scripture understanding? You will have to show the rest of the the the, the body because they, they do have a committee. They do have some form of eldership 
system that they vote and they, they have counsel on. If, if, if the guy who ends up with the man's wife should not be the guy deciding or, you know, uh, uh, make a decision, oh, he's abandoning her, oh, he's abusing her, because he's biased. And even if he's doing all those things, there's no ground for divorce, biblically speaking. What Pastor Dow should have done, he should have said, listen, whatever problems you may be having or, and things of that nature, we'll pray for you. It's probably best for you to go back to your family. Let me talk to your husband. Let me roll the, the situation. But uh, I'm going to put the link also of this particular conversation because Eric uh, uh, Gonzalez, he comes in the show and, and, and also uh, brings his, his understanding as well. He did not abandon her. He was not, he was part of the Florida body, and he was doing the work there, according to his testimony. Now, you know, he, he, I'm pretty sure he was having issues with his wife, but those are not ground for, for divorce, and those are not ground for the church to grant them a divorce, and the pastor end up with her? That should have been your business, brother. Maybe you would, you would have left the church much earlier, and you would have seen the color uh, 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 or oh, the true colors of uh, uh, Pastor Dow way earlier than, you know, recently. I mean, cry out like the book said. He called me. He, he called me. But I'm not finna just jump in this situation and make myself a part of it when it ain't got nothing to do with me. See, that's, now, that, straight, that's that street mentality we have to break away. It ain't nothing to do with me. I'm cool with him and not my business. No, we have to make things our business. When we're in a body, it affects all of us. Because one person could pollute the whole pool. The whole body could be polluted because of this. You may be handling blessings because of this. And, and, and I think Pastor Rufus is a good brother. I think, you know, what I know of him, I don't know him well or at all really, but, you know... I, we're going to continue having conversation. And we talked about maybe having a, a conversation about this, how his point of view, because I believe that point of view about a man not doing his duties, blah, blah, blah. And if he's not doing his duty, well, sister, you could divorce him because he's not following the most high God and blah, blah, blah. I could see that type of thinking can uh, squeeze, you know, Satan could squeeze in in the middle and create a divorce or justification for a divorce. And women lie, man. Women stress the truth. Women, you know, th th there was a, a female psychiatrist. She said, listen, don't ever believe a woman when they come to you. They're always lying. A female psychiatrist, matter of fact, I'm going to play some of the videos maybe in, the, in a few days or, or next year. I don't, I don't find them right now, but she's on TikTok, and she's always talking about the, 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 the psychological game that women play all the time when they want to get out of a situation. And you, sometimes you got these guys that come in with this, you know, a, a superhero, you know, uh, complex. I'm going to save the day. I'm going to take this, you know, this damn in distress, and I'm going to free her. Pastor Dow, you was wrong for that. That was the stance I took back then. Did I finally start hearing some different things? Yes. But it was all coming from Dow. I'm not going to run with one person's side of the story. You, you understand what I'm saying? Eric never called me. I hope he comes in or not. He'll tell you. He never called me. He never had a conversation with me about it. So that's where I stand on that thing. Um, is the man in adultery? We'll see. We're going to find out. I know the picture that was painted was that was a very bad, very, very bad, very, very bad situation. That's how the picture was painted. Hopefully I answered your question. Eric is in the building. If he wants to come on, the link is pinned to the top under the cash app. Eric, you will see the link pinned to the top. Uh, to some degree, you did. Um, and, and, and that's Brother Eric. He's going to be uh, Eric Gonzalez. He's going to be coming in in a few. Uh, I'm not going to play the whole video out of respect out of uh, uh, Brother uh, Ferrillian Fler Raylo. I'm going to probably put the link in the bottom for you guys could see it. You know, you guys could get it on your own. Matter of fact, let me do that now. Uh, so you could guys have the link. I'm going to put it in the comment section. Okay. Here's the entire interview. 
It's about three hours and 54 minutes and 27 seconds. So that's the, that's the link right there if you guys want to grab it. Uh, let me also put it in the community section as well so you guys can also um, get the link. Let me let me see here where you at. Baba. Okay, let me put uh Let me put the, uh, where are you? Uh, there we go, there we go. This is uh, this is his channel here. Let me just copy and paste his name next to the, okay, perfect. And also, if anybody wants to come in, uh, let me put also the, The invite. Uh, if people want to call in, you got the link in the bottom. Let me put it right here. Let me put this bad boy right here. Bada beam, bada boom. Uh, there it is. So the link is in the comic section. If you guys want to come in, you're more than welcome to come in uh, and discuss whether or whether or not, you know, I see things differently. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe... You know, um, I'm missing a, 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 a step. Maybe there's a scripture that I didn't I, I didn't read. Uh, you know, let, let's 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 discuss it. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. Uh, the link is below. Uh, Sirach 42 and 13 says, "For from uh, from for from garments comes a month of from a and from woman comes greatness." Women are very manipulated because they're very, they're the weaker sex. So therefore, when you're the weaker sex, when you're in a situation that you are the, the, the less physical, you can't, women cannot win a fight through uh, physicality. So they got to always try to win a, a fight to an argument, to psychologically uh, try to debate. And that's why you have to be very careful when, you, when, you, when you're talking to women, especially if they're giving you their side of the, uh, 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 of, of the story. They're going to leave out a lot of details, okay? Uh, not all women, let's, let's get that perfect, a majority of the women, sometimes they, they, they know how to manipulate the words to try to make it seem as like, you know, they're the victim in the situation. And sometimes it's not, you know, they, they'll start with, my husband hit me, and that was wrong. I'm an abusive relationship. Okay, what happened before? I don't know. I don't remember. What happened, you know, after? I don't know. I remember. What do you remember? He hit me. And they just focus on the hit because then he, they want you to respond from an emotion perspective. So you have to calm down, get all the details. And if she's not willing to give you all the details, she gets upset at you, that means she's lying to you. That means she's not telling you the truth. Trust me, brothers. Don't get caught up with the dope, the hopey dope, right? Fair use. Thank you for your, for, for your answer. Uh, one, one other question, I, I, and I could leave because I know other people could come in or want to come in. Uh, uh, that's also said prior to leaving to Puerto Rico, uh, was our first visit. This is, a uh, Gonzalez. He, he, he's going to be, like I said, you can listen to the, to the show on your own, but I just want to play this part because it, it, it sheds light on the mindset of Pastor Dow. Fair use. Um, did they came in as a couple? Is, is that was established? Oh, yeah. That yeah, they yeah. came in as a couple. Oh, yeah. When they came to, like I said, they were coming to visit straightway, drove up from Florida. So they stopped in Georgia and, and hung out with us for a few days, three, four days. They were definitely married. Like I said, I saw no issues. I saw zero problems with that family. I thought they were a great family. I, I mean, like I said, if they had issues, his wife and children did a very good job of hiding them because I saw nothing of the sort. Neither did any of the saints at straightway Georgia at the time. And so I believe they stayed three or four days with us. And okay. we had beautiful fellowship. Okay, so if a couple comes in together, they had kids, they straightway say, well, you not marry until you get married in front of Yah, or they accept them as a married couple? They, they accept them as a married couple. If they come in saying they married, it don't matter if it's done by the state they come from or if it's done by their own private contract, their own mental agreement. Right. We just accept them. The problem comes is when they start having issues and how that gets handled. Right That's now, where the problem comes. so now Pastor Dow is with that brother's wife, and he's saying 
he did not commit adultery. Is that the premise here? He said, yes, he said he did commit adultery because this man was not a good husband. Uh, he accused him of abandoning him, abusing her. Again, okay. It was okay. some other stuff said, but he felt like she had grounds to no longer be a part of that carnal situation. That's how he felt. Right. Now, how do you feel in regards of that? How do you feel in regards you had a couple came in, they were having issues. Let's just say he was dead wrong. He had a drug issue. He had an anger issue, whatever it may be. Or she had issues too. He had issues, you know, like every other couple, whatever that may be. What is your stance on Pastor Dow when is the smoke cleared, everything is over, he's with that man's wife. What is your stand? I, and I, I think I asked her before. My, yeah, and I, I'm telling you what it is, but I don't think you, you're receiving it. I don't have a stance on it because, again, I still don't know all the information. People think they do, but they don't. Okay. I still don't have all the information, and I still don't know everything. I know what I've been told, but okay. again, I've, I haven't heard both sides of the story. So okay. again, I don't dip into other men's business. When they bring me in, I do. When they don't, I don't. Okay. So for my, I guess, let me ask the question this way. From my perspective, I look at it as his wife. There's no scenario that I could find out that would say, okay, that's not adultery. I'm trying to see the scenario in my mind, the circumstance. All right, let me help you. Let me help you. you know let me help. So, so maybe give me, give me like a, a thing I like I, I may be blind on. No, no. You could say, oh, okay, I, I can see that. I get, what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Let's just say you have a situation. This is a hypothetical, right? And a couple is into some serious, deep level debauchery, right? Satanic, okay. devilish debauchery. One person comes over and says, I want to be done with that. I don't want to live that lifestyle no more. The other person says, I don't want to live that lifestyle either but their actions are still living that lifestyle. Okay. What would you advise that the one person, and I ain't say male or female, what would you advise the one that you can clearly see don't want to be a part of that lifestyle no more? What would you advise them to do? Okay, so, Paul made it, you know, um, comment on that situation that if a believer is with an unbeliever, right? And if the unbeliever chooses to stay with the believer, let not the believer put the unbeliever away. But if the unbeliever wants to depart, let them depart. The brother or sister is not under bondage in that such case. Facts. Now, now, but if you read in the same verse, uh, in verse 39, it says the woman is bound to a husband as long as uh, he lives. If, she die, if he dies, he could marry some, she could marry somebody else only in the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. So the way I view it in, 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 in a situation like that is, and I also want to quote Peter when it says that wives submit to your husbands even if they, they, they believe not, if they own that your, your, ch the, your chaste language could convert them. Right. He's so there was in the Bible, Christians that believe in, in Christ and you had non-Christians that believed most likely in Judaism or another religion, or they didn't believe in God, a non-believer. So they dealt with that. So my perspective, I will try to first preserve the marriage. If it's a marriage, if they have children, and maybe he doesn't want to come to the church. And maybe he wants to go out in the club every weekend, still hang out with his boys. I don't see that ground for divorce necessarily because the first century church dealt with that scenario. But I think, but, but I think this is to answer the, this last point. I think in that, even if you, we could rationalize some divorce in that situation, which I could see that. I think in this situation, that situation is different from this situation because this situation, they came in as a couple. There's no evidence that either one is an unbeliever now, from my understanding. They just left the church, or one of them left the church, the husband. 
from one understanding, he still believes in Yah, he still believes in God. There's some issues there. So I don't see in this particular scenario that we could say this, we should see, unless he's a liar, unless this, I, I, I'm trying to come up with this situation, not in a general I, hypothetical. Does that make sense? I, I tried to get away from this particular one, but still stay similar, right? So we can get an understanding possibly. Again, I don't have all the information. Y'all think y'all got all the information. Some people do. I don't believe anybody has all the information on this. I don't believe Eric has all the information on this. I don't believe Nelly has all the information. I don't believe Pastor Dow has all the information. I really don't. But what I'm saying is, is you, you didn't really like answer my question. I personally, if I see a couple, and that's why I'm, I'm not even talking about the Gonzalez's now. If I see a couple and I can tell that there is some deep level satanic toxic stuff, and I can tell that one person really has a heart for y'all and wants to get out of that. And I see another person that is still living that lifestyle. They're still stuck to that lifestyle, a damning lifestyle. I can't in good conscience tell that person to submit themselves to that individual. I can't do that. I can't. Okay. And I so, don't think I don't uh, think I that's what yeah. the and I don't think that's what the Bible's telling us to do when it talks about if a person is unbelieving. See, I, see. I, I counsel I counsel people and tell them this because you know a lot of a lot of talk goes out about how um, people have to separate from their carnal family when they come into the truth and things of that magnitude. Hey, look, as long as they're not doing anything to hinder you in the faith, I don't tell people to stop talking to your carnal family members. I don't. As long as they're not hindering your faith, what's wrong with having a relationship with them? Right. Now the well, problem that I have is, what if they start vexing you? What if they start coming against you? What if they start hindering you in your walk and trying to uh, manipulate and do all this stuff? Yeah. You, you don't have to submit yourself to that. So now I tell you, get away from that. But I would okay. do that if a Hebrew did that too. Okay. Well, well, let me. I, I, I appreciate it. We have this conversation because okay. now I understand you better, and, and why you, you you answer the way you answer. But. Mm -hmm. If can we okay, we could argue about the someone worshiping Yah sincerely and someone not worshiping Yah, or he is some devil worshiping satanic evil scenario. But you got that's the extreme, right? That's the extreme. And you have and for the record, you know, I was just calling the most high God, the great I am, a higher uh yeah, because that's the name he recognized, and you know, I was I just wanted to just talk his language. Okay, fair use have spectrum someone is maybe perhaps you know um believes in god but it, he's lukewarm is that is that justification what is is it, it what about he's not lukewarm he's a little warmer than colder where where's the toll line the reason why i'm asking these line of question is because i believe from a perspective as, as a leader um and what i have seen I don't believe that Pastor Dow biblically had the right to take that man's wife. I don't see the extreme devil worshiping satanic situation on his brother. Uh, let me uh, hold on, hold on, let me finish. I want, I want to let, I'm let you. I got you. You know that I don't see that. So I see that there there was a couple that most likely were searching for something, and in most couples in America, there's always some conflict and issues and unresolved issues and resentment and things that they did years ago and they haven't resolved that. And when they come to a leader to get uh, uh, some form of resolution to their path, and when the smoke clears, the pastor's with his wife, I, I, don't, I don't see a scenario in, in any multiple universe that that will be okay. Okay. And, and and what I'm saying, brother, I respect what you what your no point problem. of view and, and, and things of that nature. But Pastor Dow, I think I used to promote him and I used to like him and I used to say, hey, he's doing it right. This is what they they doing. And yeah, he's a little rough and 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 in his approach. But you know that doesn't bother me. You know if he's right, he's right. Things of that nature. But when I heard this and I I began to go, I didn't believe it in the beginning. So not, it not, it's probably a lie. But when I saw all the evidence and Newbury, he was able to show me some things that 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 um, and, and, and that I can't deny it. That they were a couple. They were together, and they're now they're not together. Just on the optics and how things look. As a leader, he's like, eh, 
this is not it doesn't look good but biblically it. biblically in this situation i have not seen any ground for divorce christ made it clear it be the act of fornication okay and i believe that was gender specific for the bill divorcement was it was a gender specific law there was no way in the torah that a woman could say i could give you a, a uh, uh, a, 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 a divorce. So I don't see even if there will be a separation in the same chapter that we just read earlier about uh, 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 unbelieving. I was quoting. He also says, if the wife departs from her husband, let her remain unmarried, not marry the pastor of the church. I mean, we have to start saying something about this, man. Hey, there has to be it. some conversation. I, I mean, it. the dude is running around taking man's hey. wives. And uh, you guys could see the, you know, and it got a little, you know, uh, interesting and, and throughout the uh, the night. But, you know, Pastor Rufus is a good brother. I think, you know, he probably was, you know, misled by Dow. I think he, 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 and hopefully he's out of that. He could see where uh, it, it, it was wrong and so forth, so on. And, and um, you know, we have to start saying things, man, because, you know, uh, 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 earlier Brother Michael said that, this looks bad upon the community and looks bad upon the understanding that God gave the right for man to have multiple wives if he chooses to. This makes us look like, you know, with some horny grubs, you know, running around just taking, you know, people's, um, I'm hearing the audio. Is the audio fine? Check, you know, make sure you, you, you guys are okay in your end. Uh, let me just double check. I'll make sure I'm okay in my end. I'm hearing the audio. Is the audio okay? I'm good at my end. Uh, so, so, um, you know, so maybe Pastor Dow have a bad misunderstanding of the scriptures. Um, maybe he was taught wrong. Maybe he was he was he was in a situation that, you know, um, um. Or maybe he's just an opportunist, man. Maybe he's just a manipulator. And like I said, when you are a leader and all eyes on you, you know who else is watching you? Satan. When you're successful and you're bringing people to the water and you, you, you're changing people's lives, you are also accessible to get possessed as well. And then when you go off, who's going to you know, protect you? Who's, I mean, who's going to protect the church from you? That's why there has to be some form of apostolic succession. It has to be in some apostolic a committee. Uh, it, it could be seven. It could be 12. I like the 12 because it, it goes back to the 12 apostles. And I think at that apostle, that uh, bishop, once he passes away or retired, he has to hand over that bishop prick in, to another man who's worthy. And it continues and continues in that 12 seat, right? And, and, and I already have it. It should be one seat. The 13th seat is empty because that belongs to Christ. And that seat should be right, rich above all the other seats. But the 12 have to agree. And let's just say, if people say, well, goodbye. What about it's, you know, it's 12 is an even number, right? What about six against three? Six. And there's a deadlock. One of the six have to convince the uh, one of the other six to say, yeah, join us. I think we're right. And they will not leave that room until they agree, until there is a seven to five or 12 anonymous, you know, 12 unanimously uh, uh, vote. And that's how things don't fall to the cracks. That's how we have righteous judgment. And that's how we, we you know, we, we make it happen. But the way it's happening now and, and, and the way people are operating now and, you know, when you have these lone wolf brothers, you're saying God is with me and God is coming to set up this church and nobody could talk to me and no one could... Could, could say anything to me, blah, blah, blah. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think that's a healthy way to, to, um, hold on, two seconds, let me fix this. I don't think it's a healthy way because pride is going to kick in. And, 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 and I could, I'm speaking from experience, man. You know, when I was, you know, an elder in GOCC overseeing 11 churches, Elder this, Elder thank you. Could I take a picture? Oh my God, Elder Gabar, I seen you on television. Oh my God, you know, you're the man of the Lord, you're a prophet, isn't that? It could get to your head. And I picked that up because I'm I'm very self-aware of my emotions and my feelings and what it goes through my mind. I, I'm, I'm not someone who is like, you know, I don't ignore these endorphins that kicks in when I get in, the, you know, that's right. Sometimes I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable with getting compliments because I, I just, I just, I don't like it. I, I don't know what is wrong with me, but 
it, it's, 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 I'm very self-aware of uh, when can I fall. I could strat- I could say, uh, I could see, I could fall. I could see, I could, I could get, you know, if this gets bigger and bigger and bigger and so forth, so on. I could see how I could, I could, how I could just seduce women in the church. Ooh, easily. Because when a man always looks good looking or better when he's a leader and when, oh man, I call him an elder and, 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 and he's doing lessons and he out there in the poop. And I could see how women could, you know, get excited over that. So, so let's play this video again. I want to, you know, uh, this is the open challenge. Uh, Pastor Dow, you, you challenged Newbury, but I'm challenging you for a debate. Fair use. All right. Hey, so the topic of the hour today on YouTube is uh, what people are perceiving to be adultery. So this is what I want to do. What I want to do is, and since there's a lot of people out there that are talking and it came by our way of Ringo TV, Ringo TV, this is Pastor Dow. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate on a professional moderated platform on neutral ground, somewhere between New York and Tennessee, a professional moderated debate on divorce and remarriage. What does the Bible actually say? Your position is, is that once you're divorced, or you, you, a woman can't be divorced and she can't be remarried, or a man shouldn't divorce his wife. I don't know what your position is. Maybe you can clarify. Uh, but my position is, is that the most high is a divorcee. There's a laws for divorce. And people, once they are divorced, they can, in fact, get remarried. So let's see how this goes. And let's see if, um, since everybody has a lot to say, let's see if we got a lot to say on a professionally moderated um, platform. Let's see if uh, Ringo TV, and maybe he have a couple other people may want to be with him on his board, on his side of that. Uh, let's see if we can get this going. Y'all have a blessed day. Make sure y'all get, make sure he gets his message, all right? Make sure you respond, Ringo. And there it is, right? So, and, you know, Ringo did res respond. He's not going to waste his time doing the bag because I think Ringo, he's like disgusted with, the, with, with, with this dude and so forth, so on. But, you know, um, I always feel we should give somebody the opportunity to correct themselves. Maybe, you know, even the scripture says that if, if an elder goes off, rebuke among all, if he repents, restore. So that even elders are, there are scriptural teachings in the Bible that even addresses a, a pastor, uh, you know, going off and, and, and doing his own thing and, 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 and letting Satan come in and, and you know, uh, it's always the same old thing, man. It's nothing new in the sun. It's women, money, power. That what makes man fall. It's nothing. It's, you know, <laughs> look at all the greats. Solomon, how he fell, right? Women, right? King David, adultery, women, right? Saul, what he felt, power, right? He didn't want to, you know, he knew that he was no longer, uh, that his family would not be, no longer be the king line. So he, hatred came in, right? It's all power, money, women, sex. It's, 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 it's no rocket science here in regards of the, uh, how Satan is going to attack men. So us men, when we start a committee in a church, you should create a, some form of a, 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 uh, something, some buffer between you and yourself. Because you're going to fall. You're going to be biased. You, it, 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 there's no way you could, you could, uh, you, you could judge righteously 100% of the time without you having friends and men that are in the same walk and say, wait, I see that differently. And discussing that because iron shops is iron. Even Peter, when he began to teach the Gentiles in the book of Acts, he had to go to Jerusalem and give an answer for his account. And I thought we were only teaching the Gentiles, I mean the Israelites. Christ said, only go to the lordship of the house of Israel. Why are you going to the Gentiles? He had to explain. And once he explained, they gave all glory to the most high God. And he had witnesses with him and said, yeah, they received the Holy Spirit. That was the evidence. There's a process to this. 
There's not one guy just running around doing the whatever he feels is right just because, he, you know, God is with him or he believes God is with him. You ain't that special, bro. Get over yourself. You're subject to, any, to, to fall like any other man. I'm subject to fall like any man. Any man. I'm not perfect. I, 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 I pray every day for forgiveness for my sins. It wasn't right, man. It wasn't right. And, and until men stand up and say, you know what? There needs to be a, a universal code. And I hope if this debate does happen, and I hope it becomes successful enough and people see it, it will, it will strike conversation within all the leaders of the different churches saying, you know what? We need to have a universal understanding or universal law. Because what happened is a lot of these women, they jump from camp to camp. I would guarantee... It passes down, this sister's having having issues, and he has to kick her out because she's a demon, she's a Jezebel, blah, blah, blah. She's going to go to another church and be like, <laughs> I was an abusive relationship with a pastor. Pastor, now you heard of him, right? She, she's going to end up somewhere. She's going to end up ISUPK. She's going to end up in, 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 you know, GOCC, she's going to end up in Israel United in Christ. She's going to, you know, somewhere she's going to end up talking her sharp story. So let this video be a testimony to say, yeah, go back to Eric Gonzalez. That's your husband. Right? So we have to establish some universal law within the, within the community of the Israelites. You can't say, oh, you was with GOCC, you was with ICPK, or you was married to that brother. Oh, that doesn't count because we're calling on Yad, and he's that calling on Yahawa, and we're calling on Ahaya. we got to stop all that nonsense. We look like idiots. And we are promoting fornication. If a sister is with a camp and is having some issue with her husband, that's not her right to start going to another camp and talking about, I'm an abusive relationship. I need some help. Can you guys help me out? Even if she is in an abusive relationship, there has to be some constant conversation because women lie sometimes. Women stress the truth. And as pastor, it's our job to restore, not to break away. And yes, if the sister is going off and not operating in the spirit and things of that nature, yes, the husband who is her Lord can put it away somewhere until uh, she gets right. But that's still your wife, brother. The only way you can divorce your wife is if she commits fornication. And what is fornication? An unlawful sexual act. If she's running around uh, doing lesbian acts, if she's running around sleeping with a beast, if she's doing any form of fornication like showing her body, her breasts, her buttocks, her, her in a seductive way to other men. All that is also, although it's not sex, technically. Because the wife represents the husband. He's the image of God, and she's the image and glory of her husband. So let's have a universal system, order. If a member joins a Israelite or Christian church and they get recognized as a couple, whether after baptism, after the you know some lessons, whatever is your process of membership, and you recognize and they get recognized as a couple in that church, all churches have to recognize them as a couple. Period. And we could start with that. And we could all agree to that. We could, you know, we may disagree on the calendar and the name and this and the other, but we could just simply agree on that. If a church, it's the same way if a couple gets married in Texas, New York recognized that marriage. Same situation. And if we'll be united on that, it will stop all this fornication going on in the churches. Because there's a lot of fornication going on in the churches. And God is not going to bless us, man. We continue, you know, adding and abetting bad behavior like this. And we have to control these pastors from these churches, these single pastors running around doing all kinds of nonsense. And there's no one to correct them. It doesn't work. 
Doesn't the, doesn't the evidence show you that it doesn't work? And the most I keep your blessing. Shut up.